Today on the Disciple Maker broadcast with Desmond Mead. Jesus didn't tell me he had to wait five or seven years. So true. You know, Jesus said, This day you shall enter into heaven. And Solandra Benton. If it's your passion, it's your calling. And you don't care what people say or what they do. If you got to get up at four o'clock in the morning and get it done and leave it, make it happen. Prophetess Fisher and welcome to Disciple Makers. Today do I have a fabulous lineup for you. We're going to be talking with Cilantro Benton with Florida Coalition on Black Civic Participation and with me also is Desmond Mead. With state, he's the State Director for Pico Florida Lifeline and to heal to he, Lifeline to Healing actually and the president for Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. That's FRRC. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Awesome. <laughs> what type of day are you having today? Well, we just left um, a Black Women's Roundtable, which is one of the programs of the Florida Coalition on Black Civil Participation. And uh, we had a room full of women, an awesome speaker, and Judge Hatchet. Um, she just rocked the house and really inspired the young women and um and it was just an awesome feeling to have you know we did have some men in the room as well so they, so they got to enjoy you know a day with the women and yes i'm sure they left out in power so we felt good about it the women came in they left out in power and ready to go back to their communities and help their communities and engage and get them ready to you know take it to another level. And I can see that excitement even on your face today. Awesome. Yes. And Mr. Me, tell us a little bit about uh, the, I, I understand you're Pico. Tell us about that, a little bit about that. Yes, well I'm the state director for Pico Florida's Lifelines the Healing Program. Uh -huh. and, and we're definitely a, a, a faith-based organization that specializes in organizing congregations of multi, mm -hmm. multi-faith okay. um, and getting them more civically engaged in a lot of the issues that we see are in our communities, what? such as gun violence, okay. uh, mass incarceration, mm. school and prison pipeline, and our topic, uh, hottest topic right now is felon disfranchisement. Oh, what, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, felon disfranchisement and policies and the, that were recreated in the Jim Crow era that mm. was used to disfranchise African Americans. Wow, and so this is systematic. This, yes, definitely My systematic. My goodness. It was used in conjunction with poll taxes, literacy tests, you know, and intimidation, hangings, you wow. know, anything that you know, could be implemented or used to keep African Americans from being civically engaged they were, you know, used during this time. And so felon disfranchisement is like uh, the last holdover from those days. And it's still being, these policies are still prevalent in Florida today. And you would think that was a thing of the past, <laughs> but not so. No, no. My goodness. Now, I know you do some work with the coalition in conjunction with uh, PICO, is that correct? Yes, yes. Um, uh, part of the Florida Coalition, we have uh, we help support different coalitions and different community organizing groups that's in the, our communities throughout the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, we support them in ways like you've seen today, like with the Multicultural Center. Um, that we're looking forward to that being built in Martin County because like you've seen today, we would like to bring a lot of programs to that center, mm -hmm. um, bring folks in um, like Judge Hatchet, um, Charles Dutton, My goodness. different folks, Vivica Fox, different people to bring into the community because it's a small community mm -hmm. and a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of people go to the larger cities. They don't normally go to the so smaller true, cities so and, and those people there are left out or, you know, so we try to bring and engage people um, that have name recognition to come into these small communities and have dialogue with the women. Um, now Desmond, you know, he heads up the Black Men's mm -hmm. Roundtable where we really, because a lot of the, um, as we found statistics, that there's a lot of black males at a high rate of being incarcerated. My goodness. And then when they come back home, mm -hmm. they have to come back home to the family where, you know, we have that 
you know, have to deal with that issue and make sure that they do not return back because they don't have a job or lack a house or lack mm -hmm. of, so it's a big issue that we try to engage our communities around the state of Florida, the real issues and concerns that we have, and not only that, advocate to our politicians um, to let them know that, you know, this is hurting the community, this is what's happening, and that to let them know also that it's not fear, because a lot of people don't realize that when we do census every 10 years in um, the United States, mm -hmm. they actually count people in jail. Well, they're wow. not gonna stay in jail. They're not yes. gonna stay in prison. When they get out of jail or get out of prison, they're gonna go back home to their families. Mm -hmm. And that's where the money needs to go into those communities that we're able to help them to build businesses or whatever. If people don't hire them, then we gotta create businesses jobs. and jobs mm -hmm. or house and we have to take them home into our homes back to mama back to daddy and they have to stay with us but the money is not coming back into the communities because they're actually putting them into the prisons and that's the that's need to talk more about that but this is the reason why we really have to have the wings to deliver to multicultural center so that we could be able to have these type of round tables and educate the community mm -hmm. and bring in other folks in to educate them as well as, um, as the political politics. We're nonpartisan, but they need to know because they're making these laws that's affecting our families and Absolute, our children. Absolutely. Now, I know that you are the representative here for the state of Florida, and speaking, speaking about recognition, you're pretty... Uh, well known in this area. Could you tell us a little bit more about your background and your role in well, the coalition? Well, my role in the coalition, I'm in, um, well, we have a national, it's a national coalition, the National Coalition on Black Civil Participation, mm -hmm. and I am the state convener for Florida, so I do all the convenience and, you know, of the different organizations that's part of our coalition and run programs like the Black Women's Roundtable, mm -hmm. the Black Men's Vote, um, the Black Youth Vote, which we have a youth group as a component of it too, that actually go out, we train them, they go out and engage and get their peers registered to vote and, and, and the importance of why they need to vote so they can have a voice. Because people don't realize in the United States only two things count. That Politicians, anybody feels though that you're a citizen, you own a piece of land, mm -hmm, property, mm -hmm. or you have a voter's registration card. Wow. If you don't own, if you're not a landowner, or you don't have a voter's registration card, they they don't listen. Wow. Okay, so economically, maybe you can't own a piece of land for mm -hmm. whatever, but a voter registration card is a free thing to do. It costs you nothing. Just be a citizen of the United States, and less dealing with you being a felon, which we're going to correct that wrong. Um, but so we try to encourage our communities and our young folks, you know, mm -hmm. this is important be, at 16, this is when you can, your sweet 16, you can register in Florida to vote. You can't vote until 18, but on your sweet 16 birthday, you need to, vote. You need to register uh, I, because that's your voice. Absolutely. So if you're listening today, you have to make your vote count. You must know it's a valuable rights and there are many that have paid the price so you can be able to vote. And, and today also you might be thinking, what does this have to do with faith? But a lot of these organizations that are trying to re-engage people back into the community yes. and getting them re uh, the restoration that we're talking about, they're faith-based, aren't they? Yes. Tell us about the restoration <laughs> portion. Well, yes, well in Florida, the only one of four states that permanently disfranchise individuals that have been convicted of a felony. What do you mean by disenfranchised? That means that they lose their civil rights for mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. They cannot vote, they cannot serve on the jury, which we've seen evidence of during the George Zimmerman trial. Uh -huh. uh, they cannot run for office, they cannot own homes wow. uh, in a lot of places, wow. and they're restricted in the type of employment that they can receive. Wow. So the current policies that Florida have in place now, that an individual will have to wait five or seven years before they can, after they've completed their sentence, mm -hmm. before they can apply to the governor to have their rights restored. Wow. And after those five or seven years, they will have to wait an additional six years in order for the application to process. And even after waiting 11 to 13 years, that individual will stand less than 1% of a chance of getting their right to restore. One percent. Less than one percent. Less than one. Yes. So we're talking decimals. Yes. yes. Point zero zero eight. Point zero <laughs> point zero zero eight. My goodness. And so when 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 you when you look at that, it, what you what a person is facing mm -hmm. is a, a, a lifetime bar from being fully engaged and being uh, uh, enjoying 
citizenship status. His civil rights. His civil rights. But isn't uh, prison supposed to rehabilitate and bring people back into the community and restore them? Isn't that what it's supposed to do? Well, that's what it's supposed to do. Yes. But it, it, we know that in these times it don't because it's it more of a profit work. generating uh, apparatus. And, and you know, th that goes right back to what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, you, you mentioned two things that are very, very important, that right to vote and, and also ownership of property. So it all boils down to finances, doesn't yes. it? Money. Yes. yes. Speak to that. Yes, yes um, money. And the thing is, is that what people don't, this is what the round table, we go again, we try to teach our community the value and the importance of being wealth and having, and, and wealth don't mean that you have to be a millionaire, uh -huh. but whatever God has given you, okay, mm -hmm. be a good steward of it, mm -hmm. and make sure that you plant back and you give back, and uh, that you can have, and then at peace, have peace about your money and your finances and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and you know, Christians normally say, oh, I don't want to get involved in politics or whatever, but you are involved in politics, okay, every day. because every, every day, day, because guess what, someone's making a decision for you, that is the system that's been set up in the United States. The political system to make decisions if you're going to have a traffic light in your neighborhood, if you're going to have roads, if you're going to have schools that your kids can walk to, My or they're going to be bus five, six, seven miles away. Um, simple things that we take for granted. Um, that as Christians, yes, we pray, but also. You know, oftentimes, like my brother said, oh, but the scripture always also said, faithful without works is dead. <laughs> God want us to work in this ethics. We want, but if it's not only work in the way of the system, but also work and making sure that we take care of each other. I, uh, I, I so thoroughly agree with that uh, concept. Now, wings of deliverance. What about feeding the children? I, I've, could yes. you talk to some of the services? that they offer? Yes, I, I'm so excited about being a partner with Rings mm -hmm. of the Deliverance, and I'm so excited. I just cannot wait for the Multicultural Center to um, open. I mean, we're just talking about it. It's just an exciting thing, a vision uh, that Pastor Deanna had for a long time, and uh, we're just hoping and praying and supporting um, financial and everything that, that happened and um, soon because it's needed in the community. We need mm -hmm. those types where folks can come in because of the economic situation. We got children going to bed every day that's hungry. My okay, every right day. here in America. Right here in America. Right here. Right here next door, maybe next door to you. You don't even know it. And right now, as you know, with our government, you know, they're talking about they cut the, the, the food, the agricultural agriculture budget. So the WIC program, which usually helps real women and pregnant women, children, and that's been cut. So now the church come falls back on the church. Mm. The church, people's going to come to their churches. And I tell pastors all the time, I'm a labor, I'm a labor person. I advocate every day. I work for the Florida AFL, Seattle. That's my job full time. I advocate every day on the rights of workers. Okay. Mm. And the reason and I tell pastors all the time and faith, we all connected in the community. I advocate every day that your members have a good job, that they have good benefits, that they may be able to have health care for their children. You know, you don't want to go to work worrying about if something happened to your children, they call you from school, right. oh, oh, they got cut, they laid broke, oh, how I'm going to pay that bill. Absolutely. Or either you, how can you be able to take care of your child Absolutely. if you're sick? So we really, you know, so we tell the ministers and we tell the churches that you have to be involved. You have you, to advocate. You have to Absolutely. advocate because guess what? It's better for me to be able to go so I love to be able to go pay my tithes and offer to my minister and to our church to make sure that our church is, is grown, that our ministry is good. Doing what is designed instead of me going to, to my do. church asking, can you give me bread, and food, and this? Because ten other people also need bread. And so stuff. if you can help, yes, we need to help one another. Yes. And speaking about advocating, because we know that those who have been incarcerated, they can't advocate for themselves. So how does the coalition, how, what are you doing to help in that particular situation? Well, you know, when, especially when, you, when you're talking to uh, Christians or believers, mm -hmm. you know, we have to go back to that verse in, in, in the Old Testament where Jesus said, so much as you have done to the least among you, that's what you've done to me. And so when we reach out to faith congregations, we ask them to really just stand on that Christian principle. You know, that's been so perfectly laid out by Jesus Christ. You know, like I told you before, we have a five and seven year wait in mm -hmm. Florida. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm reminded of the time when Jesus was on the cross and that criminal asked him to be saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't tell him he had to wait five or seven years. So true. You know, Jesus said this day, 
he shall enter into heaven. Everyone even, deserves a second even chance. Even when we confessed our sins, yes. we didn't have a probationary period. So true. And so we're calling on, on, on faith congregations throughout the state of Florida and throughout this nation to really stand up, you know, mm. to be bold in this and, and speak out against what's going on in Florida. Speak out against the hunger. Speak out against the disfranchisement. Mm -hmm. Speak out against the gun violence. Speak out against, you know, mass incarceration. Because that is what we're here to do as Christians, is to look out for those individuals who are less fortunate. And so when we, when you run across a place like Wings of, uh, of mm -hmm. Deliverance mm -hmm. Multicultural Center, then you can't help but jump for joy. Because when you think back in, in, in the days, in the civil rights days, or even further back, mm -hmm. you know that every town had a watering hole where people can come to to get knowledge, where people can come to to get a little salvation, mm -hmm. where people can come to to get a bite to eat or something mm -hmm. to drink. You know, where people can come to to get organized and help their community. And so, with with Wings of Deliverance, we're we're going to have that in Martin County. So, so, so we are our brothers' keepers. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, is this something? This passion that you have. For those who have been incarcerated or imprisoned, where does that calling come from? Is that a call for you? That's a great question. In 2005, in Miami, Florida, I found myself standing in front of railroad tracks mm -hmm. on a hot and humid August day. And don't say you were going to jump. I was waiting on a train to come no. so I could jump in front of it. At that time, I was homeless. I was unemployed. I was hooked on crack cocaine and alcohol. Look right? at you and now. The only thing I own Look was at him now. The clothes on my Amen. back. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and recently released from prison. Oh. You know, um, and, and so as I stood there, you know, I didn't see any hope for me. You know, mm -hmm. I knew my, my mother, I was raised in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she had raised me to be in that situation where there I was. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to end it. But oh. God had other plans for me. My and that God. train never came. My God. And I crossed those tracks. Jesus. I went into a substance abuse treatment facility. From there, I went to a homeless shelter. And while there, I enrolled at the local college. Mm. Well, today, I'm a fourth-year law student Woo! at Florida International University. Right. You know, wow, and so that's I, awesome. So you ask me where I get that passion? Yes. I get that passion because, you know, I, I, and I tell people this a lot of times, mm -hmm. that God takes us through things. Mm -hmm in order to prepare us That's to be of greater service to him. Now, now you That's know, how he gets his Isn't glory. that awesome? Yes. And you know, when we don't tell the testimony, mm -hmm. we steal and hide still. the work. Yep. Yes. My God, we all have a testimony. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Where do you get your passion from? What, why, why do you feel so called to rescue everyone <laughs> and save the world? <gasps> I, I just... I always, I just spend a passion. I come from, again, like this, I come from a family that of, of ministers and always giving. Um, you come to home, you may have 10 or 20 people that's at your door. And, and, and my grandmother, my aunt, my mother, they feed them, they give them a mm -hmm, the place to live, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and just always, I don't know, it's just been a God giving thing. And I mean, I can remember when I was eight years old and I was looking out the window in Philadelphia at the stars and I said, God, if Whatever you want me to do, I don't know if you put me in front of presidents, I won't deny you, and I am going to do what you want me to do. You say to take care of the hungry, the, you think of the least of thee, mm -hmm. you're no better than you know mm -hmm. anyone, and that is our mission. Jesus Christ, this is what the church had to remember. Don't get caught up in the system, don't get caught up in what's going on in the world. Jesus Christ, guess what, was a politician. Why do you say that? Because now, now that is, that's fascinating <laughs> okay. because Christians don't want anything that's to do right. with politics. He was a politician. He was a community organizer. Please, he was, yes, please. he was a, because when he, I mean, as a community organizer, when he seen that there was a need mm -hmm. in his community and a lack in his community, he went out and organized the disciples. My he picked God. them. He got them a team, and he organized them. When he seen it was they need, it was a hill. They need to be fed. They were, he organized his team to go out there and meet the need of. Of, of the people in his community. Come as a political person, mm -hmm. okay, I know they don't want to hear, but it uh -huh, is. Uh -huh. As a political person, he was a political person. What do a politician do? He, uh, he's supposed to advocate and pass the things, right laws, mm -hmm. and right things the for the people that will mm -hmm. best benefit the people. Yes. And that's what he did. He passed laws. What was his law? 
His law to us, all of us, is to love God, mm -hmm. love ourselves, mm -hmm. okay, and love our neighbors like we love ourselves. Amen. But the first thing is that it's an order, okay? Yeah, it's an order. It's an order. You cannot love yourself unless you love your creator. And, and you know, I just, just by being here today and talking with you, I have to say there's been an impartation because there's an excitement in me concerning just civil duty and yes. civil responsibility because we must realize and understand that yes. we live in a system, yes. a God-given system, yes. whether you know we see it the way it ought to be versus the way it is, but God put authorities and powers yes. and things into place that there would be order. Yes. So, and today we, we've kind of shied away from it. We don't want anything to do with it because of the, I guess, the stigma yeah, yeah. that's exactly. connected with it. Yeah. But today we're coming back to our roots yes. and realizing we do have a civil responsibility. Because guess what? It, I mean, it's all, through, it's all through the Bible, okay? It's all through the Bible. In the Old Testament, I mean, God himself had anointed prophets, true prophets. If you read Kings, Kings was nothing but politicians. Mm. Kings was nothing judges. but governors, judges. judges. They yes. was nothing. Mm. And people, even and, and some people would tell the judges, the kings, anything they wanted to hear. But even the king himself said, "No, you go give me the true prophet of God, because they need to know the truth to all uh, as well." So we are those true <laughs> persons. Everywhere is the string is not said pol as political, straight. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you read through the whole Bible, everything is set up in an order, uh, a political power, and God was in every part of it. Daniel mm -hmm. with the king, the Hebrew boys with the king. Yes, Jesus yes. himself went and lobbied for the people. Wow. Okay. To the, to the leadership. You, you, you know, know, what's so fascinating is you have to get a politician to see Jesus as a politician. <laughs> you have to get an artist to see Jesus yeah, exactly. as an artist. He so, said, I am. Yes, yes. And you feel in the rest. <laughs> so true, so true. So he is in us, yes. through us, working in each one of yes. us in a fascinating yes. type of way. I want to thank you so much for being here today. Do you have any last words that you want to uh, leave with the audience? You can address the cameras and just encourage someone who has been incarcerated. Well, you know, one of the things that I definitely like to leave, especially with people who have been incarcerated before, and I know a lot of them are in our churches, mm -hmm. and, and, and they want to hide that. You know, unfortunately, we live in a time now where returning citizens or formerly incarcerated individuals, you know, look at the church as the last place that mm -hmm. they want to go mm -hmm. because that's the one place where they feel the most shame. Wow. And, 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 and just to think that, you know, Jesus, when he was on this earth, he went out and that's who he socialized with. The, the people broken, who were broken. Prison. And in prison mm -hmm. and, and, and hurt, you know. And, and so I, I encourage people that, you don't have anything to be ashamed of. Amen. Now, if you're still out there committing crimes, so true. Yeah, then you better keep it under. Be <laughs> but once you once you, you know turn your life around, you don't have anything to be ashamed of because your story is an opportunity to give God the glory. If any man be in Christ, he right. is a new, new creature. creature. Praise God. And you know, woman of God, would you also address the people? Is there anything on your mind that you want to leave with them? I just encourage the people, you know, that no matter where you are in life, you are special. Mm -hmm. God made you. He called you to something. Mm -hmm. And in your quiet time, if you don't know what that something is, ask him and he will lead you. It's easy. It's not difficult. Okay? If you just, if anything, you know, you're going to have some struggles, mm -hmm. not through you or through um, God. But you may, it's going to always be obstacles. But the thing is, if it's your passion, it's your calling. Amen. And you don't care what people say or Amen. what people do. If you got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and get it done and leave it. Make it happen. happen. <laughs> You're going to do it, and that is your passion. And I just encourage them to, in a quiet time, if you don't know. Um, and also to reach out to young people. Young people, look, I work with young people all the time. Mm -hmm. They are looking for it direction. They are looking for someone. Though even the ones on the street you think there's no hope, there is hope for them. All they do, they lives. just take one person mm -hmm. to speak into their life and tell them you are important. I'm you gonna ask you one more question. Now if someone was interested in getting involved in politics, where would they start? 
Um, well, they can at their local city hall, at their local school board. If you got children, go to find out where the, the school board meetings and just sit in. You don't have to know, just sit in. Listen, mm -hmm. God gives us two ears, one mouth. That's for a reason. Just listen, be present. I remember when I was a young mother and I was tired working and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to the PTA meeting to the school board. And I walk and it was a, um, an older woman who actually was the maintenance lady. It was at night, about seven o'clock. And she said to me, and I know it was nothing but God. And I'm like, cause she could probably see, I'm like, cause I'm like, oh, I'm going, but it's mm -hmm. my children. Mm -hmm. And she said, young lady, she said, I know you tired, but this is the best thing that you can do. They don't know your name, but they know you're Elijah's mother. Mm. And by you just coming, they're going to treat Elijah at 7 p.m. tonight. They're going to treat Elijah Different every day. Play differently and wow. I come to realize that wisdom that she was a custodian mm. probably didn't have a lot of education but she had a lot of wisdom amen mm. and we're going to leave you with that thought be active in your community each one help one knowing that God has a purpose for us and he has knitted the body as one help someone today encourage a young person and thanks for stopping by with disciple makers go and make disciples what up world, I am your boy, the Prophet God Star, host of Rap Resurrection. And I just want to come before you for a minute today to encourage you to support Christian TV by getting your Believe in Jesus hashtag t-shirts. For the Bible says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes the Jew first and also the Gentile what is that good news that Jesus has saved us that Jesus took our place in hell and gave us his seat his place of righteousness in the kingdom of God you can say you you're unashamed you can say that you uh, believe all day but but Support Christian TV and when wear your faith on your chest. Put your faith on display. Go to www.livingwitnesstv.com forward slash believe t-shirt. Again, that's www.livingwitnesstv forward slash dot com forward slash believe t-shirt. Go and get yours today. God bless. Download a copy of the Cold Case Mixtape by the Prophet God Star for free at www.rapresurrection.com forward slash Prophet God Star. Mixtape includes the hot single So Much Better, Warfare featuring Gideon, and Official featuring OMG. Get your copy today. For your love gift of $15 or more, receive your copy of this must-have DVD by Prophetess Marilyn Fisher with the life-transforming messages, Supernatural Provision, and Behold, I Give You Power. Order your copy today at www.livingwitnesstv.com. Until next time on the Disciple Maker broadcast, tell someone that Jesus loves them and go make disciples.